Office by Government. My Lords, it's a pleasure to follow the noble ladies, Baroness Worthington and she, and, and offer green support for this amendment, which is obviously urgently needed. Um, I think I'm going to seek to add, I essentially agree with everything the two noble ladies said, particularly the points made by the noble lady, Baroness Sheehan, about the fact that offsets are essentially a con that we cannot be used to uh, trade off carbon continuing um, fossil fuel emissions uh, with offsets. But nonetheless, we are where we are, and they're certainly going to happen. And I think the complexity um, is really well il illustrated by a recent report by HSBC, which, looked at, um, which found that $246 billion of hydroelectricity depends on water provided by threatened tropical cloud forests. Now, we think about where the funding and where the support and where the credit should this should go. Of course, to maintain that electricity supply, surely the people producing that electricity should be funding that. But also, of course, this is a carbon store, and it's a real demonstration of the way in which, as the Treasury's own Dasgupta report illustrated, the economy is a complete subset of the environment, is it entirely dependent on an environment that we're fast trashing. But just to pick up the points about the problems with the current Wild West system that I think is, is, a, um, is being very clearly demonstrated already, a report this week in the Journal of Frontiers in Forests and Global Change by the Berkeley Tra Carbon Trading Project which studied nearly 300 carbon offset projects, which were nearly 11 per cent of global carbon offset projects to date. They found that these projects were systematically overcrediting their results and delivering extremely dubious carbon offsets. Um, these were apparently respected registries that did not follow standards to make sure that projects were having a real and tangible impact on carbon levels. Or, I think a particular area of difficulty, whether these were projects that would have happened anyway, whether or not the, the extra carbon credit was being claimed. And I think just one final point that I'd like to make, um, perhaps like the noble lady Baroness Worthington seeking ways in which the government might see this as an advantage. This Wild West, um, the need for extensive due diligence for any financial body to be able to claim uh, that they are, have genuine, honest carbon credits that will deliver over the long term, because the climate emergency is, of course, a long-term project, not just something for one year or five years. Uh, there's a very significant cost for any company going into this and wishing to protect its reputation. If it, this is a regulated sector, then actually that's going to make it a great deal easier for people to do due diligence, to be able to rely on it, to not to have to do the work themselves at considerable cost and considerable complexity and indeed carrying considerable risk. So the need for this is obvious. The problems with offsetting both carbon and biodiversity are very clear. We are where we are. We shouldn't be where we are, but we are where we are. And this is, offers one way forward that would actually be good for the financial sector as well as for um, the planet.